Hello everybody, welcome to That's Football and for the second international break in a row, Gareth Southgate, he's done it again, has completely and utterly misunderstood the fan base he's meant to represent. Uh, this is a guy that, you know, puts himself out there as uh, Mr. Open to All Opinions, a man of the people, very political in his answers. That's one of the things that he's always been credited for. But he's actually running what appears to be a dictatorship when it comes to England, where only his opinion matters. Because yet again, for the second international break in a row, he's come out after an England game and questioned why England fans are, you know, booing his players. And... The honest answer is because of him. And I think that this PR piece that he's trying to put out there, that he's in the right, is incredible. This time it's Jordan Henderson. Last international break, it was Harry Maguire. And he seems to have sort of mastered the art of deflecting the blame and putting it on those horrible fans. Gareth Southgate has selected Jordan Henderson, who has basically retired from football to earn his crust in Saudi Arabia. He's doubled his wages. It's around half a million pounds a week. Some say more. He has basically said, I don't want to play competitive football anymore because I want to go and earn silly money. That should have been end of England career. That is a guy who is pure and simply a mercenary and fair play to him. He's not the only one who's gone to Saudi Arabia to sometimes play in front of a, hundred, a few hundred people. I read an article this week that the crowds at some of these games are incredibly low. Jordan Henderson has played in front of two or 3,000 people. There is not huge audiences there for that sport at the moment. There is huge revenue, there is huge wages, but there is not huge interest, even in the country, of where the league is. Jordan Henderson has gone there not to play in front of big crowds, not to play competitive football. He has gone there to earn money and turned his back on playing in the Premier League and competing for his England place. Some people look at that and go, why is he being picked for England ahead of somebody like James Ward-Prowse, who got relegated with Southampton, left the club that he loves to go to West Ham, where he's got three assists and two goals in seven games and is playing as one of the best midfielders in the league this season. Not only English midfielders, but in the league this season and has been overlooked for the second international break in a row. So some people would look at that and go, I don't care whether Jordan Henderson's had a good career in the past. I don't care whether Jordan Henderson's got great banter in the dressing room. I don't really care about that. If you want to bring him over as a cheerleader or a coach, absolutely fine. But he should not be taking up a place of somebody else when he has basically retired for money in Saudi Arabia. And maybe some England fans think that and look at the treatment of other players and go, I'm not happy with this. This is not what England should be all about. All I can do is jeer at a home game at Wembley. And for Gareth Southgate not to appreciate and respect that and say that that shouldn't be happening... Well, actually, I think he's quite clever because I think he did it with Harry Maguire as well. Harry Maguire had played less than 20 minutes of Premier League football when he was called up for the last international break. There'd been four Premier League games. Less than 20 minutes of football. Gareth Southgate plays him in both games. Harry Maguire scores an own goal. He gets booed in the Scotland game. And suddenly, instead of it being Southgate's problem for picking a player that probably didn't deserve to get picked... It's the fans' fault. They're the problem. And it's the same, ahead, same, same again with Jordan Henderson, isn't it? Why are these horrible fans booing Jordan Henderson? They should be cheering him and admiring him. But what, what it actually comes down to, it's not even really about Jordan Henderson. It's not really about Harry Maguire. And let's not forget Kelvin Phillips. This is a guy who, when Man City played Arsenal last week and Rodri was suspended, and it was a very midfield battle and substitutions were being made, Pep Guardiola still didn't want to use him. But Gareth Southgate will. Gareth Southgate is dictating a completely and utterly different mentality to what many football fans in this country are used to. We, whether, we, whether you're 10 years of age, whether you're 50 years of age, we are used to the England team being the creme de la creme of English football. You earn your place in the England team by what you do for your club team. Capello was not a great England manager, but what he basically said to David Beckham was, if you want to play for England again... You need to be back playing in Europe. He was in the MLS. The MLS is a far more established and competitive league than the Saudi league is really. Not to say that the Saudi league won't supersede it. But if, we were, if we've been doing that for the last 30 years, you know, you've got to play football in a competitive league to play for England. And let's not forget, 
Gareth Southgate himself has overlooked people like Jadon Sancho at Dortmund and um, Tamori at AC Milan because they're not playing in England. You've now got a player playing in the Saudi league who still gets picked for England. And don't point at it and go, well, Ronaldo does. He plays there and he gets picked. Ronaldo is not Jordan Henderson. And Jordan Henderson is, you know, isn't also one of the best players in the world and isn't one of the best midfielders in the world. And he, and he certainly wasn't last year either. So I think on this, I just find it, we see it a lot with Manchester United, but I think that this is just spin. I think this is like deflection tactics from what actually comes down to the manager. I don't even, put, I don't put this on Jordan Henderson. If Jordan Henderson didn't get picked for England, what's he going to do? He's probably going to look at it and go, I did leave Liverpool. I don't play in the Premier League anymore. Um, this was one of the things I expected to happen when I took the money in Saudi Arabia. It is what it is. Um, I'm earning great money. I've lost my England spot. I, I expected that to happen. Um, if Harry Maguire didn't get called up for England, he'd probably be very disappointed. But when he looks at his minutes on the pitch in the Premier League, he'd probably understand it. Same for Calvin Phillips. I don't blame the individual players. They're the ones who end up getting booed because they represent poor decisions from the manager who then comes out after a game and goes, I don't understand why they're getting booed. Why are these great players that, I, that don't play football in a competitive league getting booed that I've picked? They're getting booed and they're getting stick because of you, Gareth, because you've created a, a, a national team that is like a championship side, that basically you pick your mates, you pick on nepotism, you pick on form from two or three years ago. You don't pick the best players in this country on form and ability. You pick the players that you want to pick, whether they play football or not. And that is why some people are getting a bit fed up of it, because I still think England will win the Euros. And that's not because Southgate's a good coach. I said this on the podcast, Goldbridge Saves Football, this week. I think that England win the Euros, despite Gareth Southgate, because of the collection of players that we've got being better than every other nation in Europe. So he can make these bad decisions and still win the Euros and go down as you know one of the most successful England managers in history. But actually, I think it's an open goal. I think there are countless managers who would win the Euros with this set of players. I think actually the scary thing is that he might blow it. I think we should have won it in, at Wembley against Italy. I think we should have got to the final of the World Cup. And I think we have to win these Euros. He's had three big opportunities to win two Euros in a World Cup. He's blown two of them already. This is an open goal with this set of players. And still we see silly decisions picking players that don't deserve to be picked and silly press conferences after where he tries and calls the fans toxic haters when actually you are creating that feeling with your ridiculously unfounded and unfathomable decisions on recruitment and selection. I don't understand, and I'm sure many England fans do not understand, how you are selecting a player on form from three years ago. I don't understand how you are picking players that don't play club football and not picking players who are performing in the Premier League. That is not conducive or hand in hand with what national football should be about. Any national manager should be saying to players like Jordan Henderson, like Calvin Phillips, like Harry Maguire and anybody else who does this, if you're going to stay at a football club that doesn't pick you, I can't pick you for England. So you need to move, take a pay cut, go on loan and play first team football competitively so I can justify picking you. I want to pick you, you're part of my plans, but I cannot pick players that are not playing football. But Southgate doesn't do that and that's on him. Get your comments in below, make sure you smash a like on the video. I'll speak to you on the next one. Take care.